Okay, let's talk art department. And when I say art, I mean everything from paint and decorating to hair and construction and blowing things up, kind of. So production designer, head of the art department. And like I said, they are responsible for all the construction, set decoration, props, makeup, hair, costumes, locations, and the reason I say kind of special effects is special effects is technically not under the art department, but they are at the service of the production designer. Now I've circled stunts there because special effects and stunts work hand in hand together a lot of the times, but we'll talk about that later. So the production designer is so important, they are usually hired immediately after the director, a lot of times way before the cinematographer. They are there from the beginning of the project and they head the largest department. Basically, if you see it in a movie and it's not light, then that is up there because of the production designer. They're responsible for the look, the feel, the themes, the colors. And so they brainstorm with the director to determine that stuff work with the producer to figure out how they can get all that stuff for what they have money-wise. Money they research every aspect of the script either for thematic influences or if they have to be historically accurate. And then they have to hire all the people that they need to either build the things they need, design them so they can be produced, find them whether it's in a prop house or a museum, and then bring all these people together. And yes, there is an Academy Award for these guys, but they deserve to be better known. Everybody knows what a director does. Everybody knows what a cinematographer does. People should know what production designers do because what the influence they have over a movie is insane. Let's just take a look at Batman. It's a great example to use because A, it's been redone a million times, Two, it's completely fictional. They're not trying to remake someone's life. So we have to have a production designer that has a conception, their own conception of something that's been done a million times. This is a big mistake a lot of students make is they think that what the differences we see in all these things, oh, they were written into the script. And I see in a lot of science fiction scripts, especially, that writers overwrite things that really aren't the writer's job. They're the production designer's job. It's the production designer's job to come up with that costume and what that city, Gotham, actually looks like, not the writers. So let's take a look at the people behind each of these Batmans and also look at what the writers actually wrote. And you'll see how sparse it is and how much of whether you thought it was cool or not cool looking, actually was up to the production designer, not the writer. Okay, so we have the old Batman from 1989-1992, directed by Tim Burton. The production designer on that is Hampton First. Um, because I've used pictures of Batman, I'm the, I just put credits in for who the costume designer was, but remember, the costume designer works underneath the production designer, so, Bob Ringwood's great, he worked on other Batman, but it's all under the uh, purview of Anton First here. So this Tim Burton, uh, Anton First Batman had a very sort of 20s gangster cartoonish, cartoonish but still really dark feel. And that was for Batman and Batman Returns in 1992. Okay, and then next up in 95 and 97, Jill Schumacher is the director. The, the films are, I believe, Batman Forever, followed up by Batman and Robin. Um, Barbara Ling is the production designer on those that he went with, and you will see her world is nothing like what Tim Burton uh, and Anton first imagined, and certainly very different from what Nathan Crowley saw when he was working on the most recent ones. Uh, costume designer Ingrid Farron, Robert Turturis, Bob Ringwood, kicking in a hand again, but still very different look from when he was working under Anton first. And then finally, Christopher Nolan's versions on 2005, 2008, and 2012. 
that's what uh, that'd be Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. Production designer Nathan Crowley. Costume designer Lindy Hemming. And again, the sets and costume look so different in uh, Nathan Crowley's world than in either Anton First's or definitely different from Barbara Ling's. And if you think that Batman has a lot of variety, wait till you get a load of Joker. I'm not going to go into all these Jokers. Left to right, it's, uh, let's see, Suicide Squad. This is Anton First's right here. The second one is Jack Nicholson. That's Tim Burton. Obviously, this is Jared Leto. Uh, what's his face? Joaquin Phoenix uh, from Joker. Heath Ledger in Christopher uh, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight. So that's production designer Nathan Crowley. And then over here to the right um, is the Joker from the Batman show in the 1970s. So we're not even going to go into Joker because what I want to show you is the effect that they have on the entire world. Gotham. Each of these production designers had to come up with their own Gotham. And lest you think that the writer laid all this information out for them on exactly what this Gotham should look like and what each building should be like and the overall feel, let's look at the script and see what information these production designers actually did have to work with because it should not have been much. Remember, that's not the writer's job. So what did Anton first have to work with? This is the description the script gave them in Batman. The city of tomorrow, stark angles, creeping shadows, dense, crowded, airless, a random tangle of steel and concrete, self-generating, almost subterranean in its aspect, as if hell had erupted through the sidewalks and kept on growing. A dangling fat moon shines overhead, ready to burst. Basically, you've got a haiku's worth of description in here. It's not a hell of a lot to go on, but it's enough to give you the idea that this is not some bright shining city on a hill. But this is it. The rest of this comes out of the imagination of Anton First working with director Tim Burton. The first thing the production designer does after sitting with the script for a while and thinking about it is concept art and they start doing drawings of the sets or the costumes or whatever they were working on before they get into building it. These are Anton First's concept drawings for the set of Batman. So he'd work with his set designer, build these, go back and forth, talk to Burton, change things, and eventually come up with something that would result on the screen that looked like their vision of Gotham. Incidentally, R.I.P. Anton First. So what did Barbara Ling have to work with when she was reading Batman Forever and Batman and Robin? Let's see. Gothic towers of granite and glass shimmer golden in the late day sun. And then a helicopter comes in. Later in the script, it talks about Arkham Square. It describes it as tall, narrow, the crawl of bumper to bumper traffic, gutted with neon signs and giant animated billboards. So there's more, still nothing really descriptive. So when Ling came up with her world, she saw less of the hell growing from below that Anton first saw, and saw more anarchy through color. There was still grit, graffiti, trash, rain-soaked streets, but mostly color. So this is Gotham according to Barbara Ling and director Joel Schumacher. Let's see what happens with director Christopher Nolan and his production designer Nathan Crowley. Let's look at what the script says about Gotham. Well, it's not until scene 43 that we have any visual reference at all, and it just says golden spires. A few scenes later, there is a little more description, but it just says dark, crowded, and threatening. But it turns out Nathan Crowley really didn't need any assistance from the script when it came to figuring out what he wanted Gotham to look like because he was already hired even before the script was finished. So instead of looking to the script for information as to what Gotham would be like, he simply talked to the director, Christopher Nolan, who incidentally was also one of the writers. Crowley's version of Gotham looks very different from either Ling's or uh, First's. Here's concept art of the view from Wayne Tower. For one part of Gotham, a down and out part called the Narrows, um, he actually based a lot of it on a city that was demolished in Hong Kong 
called Kowloon Walled City. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's a very different look than Anton First's cartoonish noir, and very, very different than Barbara Ling's neon-lit arsenal of color. This is Nathan Crowley's Gotham. Speaking of concept art, here's some concept art of what the Joker almost looked like. I know, right? And with that pretty face for an ending, it's now time for you guys who watch the next of our Remote Distance MES-152. Just so you guys know, I hate hearing the sound of my voice on these videos. Hi guys! <laughs>